the ID number. Mr. Speaker, because we are being told, Mr. Speaker, in the last era of Uru Kenyatta, last three months he used 50 billion that no one can account for. So we don't want to be told 50 billion was used to give to Waze, yet we don't know what that Waze was, Mr. Speaker. And maybe they were being used by Azimio campaigns, Mr. Speaker. So that issue must be handled with properly because we cannot operate the transition of a government, Mr. Speaker. We want to protect going into the future, Mr. Speaker. You cannot use 50 billion and you cannot account for it, Mr. Speaker. These people must tell us where the money is. What they cannot tell us, they gave it to us, yet they were using uh, for Azimio and Kenya lands campaigns in the Kenya Republic, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Senator Beatrice Akinye. Uh, Honorable Speaker, uh, allow me just to go straight to my point without deviating to uh, uh, the sentiments by the Honorable Senator Onandi. Honorable Speaker, I rise to uh, make a point on the, on the statement of the Honorable uh, Senator for Kirinyaga, and specifically about the older person's cash transfer. Honorable Speaker, if there's anything uh, the government has done well and uh, had a good intention, it is about this cash transfer. Honorable Speaker, when this initiative uh, was begun with the Grand Coalition Government, uh, the older persons uh, in uh, the two pilot areas of Nyeri and Bondo where it began, uh, if anybody would reflect and see how those old people looked like, it was so pathetic, all uh, Honorable Speaker. But as soon as uh, this fund was disbursed, and with the time, Honorable Speaker, you saw the honor and you saw the dignity of these older persons that were receiving uh, these funds. Honorable Speaker, I rise to emphasize the fact that this is a fund uh, that has given, uh, restored the dignity of our older persons, and all we may ask for is that, uh, Honorable Speaker, uh, that it should be disbursed in a timely manner. Honorable Speaker, these funds are used for the upkeep of these older persons. Uh, if they are, they are to be made use of well with the people that benefit for them, that it must be done in a timely, in a timely way, thus uh, the factor of timeliness. And Honorable Speaker, my take on the fund is that uh, the Honorable Senator asked about when uh, uh, other older persons will be registered. For me, I would emphasize that all the older persons in this republic must be registered to benefit from this fund. Honorable Speaker, because specifically, most of the beneficiaries are always uh, people who have... Uh, a lot of responsibility, older people that have lost their children and they, they take care of grandsons and granddaughters. And our Honorable Speaker, if you look at some of the benefits, uh, this amount, however little some of us might consider it to be, some of the people that benefit from these monies have even taken their grandsons and granddaughters uh, to local schools around where uh, they stay. So Honorable Speaker, as I support this statement, I would like to say that uh, uh, the government must go forth to register all older persons uh, into this scheme and let the disbursement also be timely. Honorable Speaker, I support this statement. Honorable Senator Sotsi. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want to request for a statement on the effects of government austerity measures on the hotel industry. Mr. Speaker, sir, I rise to pass one to Standing Order 53-1 to seek a statement from the Standing Committee on Trade, Industrialization, and Tourism 
regarding the effects of government austerity measures have on the hotel industry. In the statement, the committee should, one, state the measures, if any, that the government is taking to help the hotel industry to recover from the effects of COVID-19 pandemic due to low volumes of international booking that has led to closures of several hotels. Intercontinental Hotel, Laiko Hotel, Radisson Blue, and now the imminent closure of the historic Hilton Hotel. Two, explain what informed the recent presidential directive to shove off 300 billion shillings from the current financial budget by, among other measures, discontinuing trainings, conferences, and other events by min government ministries and agencies in hotels, which will exacerbate the already difficult operating environment for hotels. Three, table the assessment report done by the Ministry of Tourism, Wildlife and Heritage on how the proposed austerity measures would affect the hotel industry and indicate the measures being taken to alleviate the negative effects caused to complementary industries such as transport, aviation, and agriculture that depend on the hotel industry. Four, state whether the relevant industry stakeholders, such as the Kenya Association of Hotel Keepers and Caterers, were involved in the decision to impose austerity measures and clarify whether donor-sponsored events in facilities, hotel facilities, will also be affected by this directive. Five, outline any additional policies the government is implementing to seal budget cuts in government and action, actions put in place, if any, to ensure that funds are not lost through corruption and tax evasion, which necessitates drastic and punitive austerity measures. And lastly, number six, table a detailed status report on the successes or failure of such past austerity measures by the past government. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Honorable Senator Mazzaio. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, first and foremost, I would like to congratulate my colleague for bringing this statement. Secondly, Mr. Speaker, it is not only in, uh, in uh, the hotels as stated, like the eminent closure now of Hilton Hotel. Hilton Hotel, as far as we are concerned, is an iconic hotel. It's among the first hotels we have had in this country. And it's going to be very unfortunate if the government will allow it to sink, knowing very well the efforts we have made to ensure that we rescue Kenya Airways. Uh, Mr. Speaker, it is also notable to, it's also important to note that uh, in Kilifi, if there's any place that has been badly affected by this mismanagement of uh, the tourist, tourism industry, then Kilifi is one of the areas that has been hard hit. We have hotels like, uh, iconic hotels like uh, Lawford's Hotel. There are hotels like uh, the Whispering Palms. We have the Angels Bay. There are quite a number of hotels which uh, those days, if I can remember, tourists used to be so many in Malindi and Kilifi in general, and the coast, basically. It was a tourist destination. But now, as we can see, it has been neglected. I want to call upon the Ministry of Tourism to wake up. There is so much corruption in that area, in the, in the, in the, in the ministry. And if at all we can, uh, the government can put a lot of concentration 
on how we can rescue or how we can uh, we can we can bring back tourism in this country then it will go uh, a long way to help or alleviate in creation of jobs job opportunities in creation of uh, uh, quite a number of infrastructure in certain areas and um, opportunities for everyone i thank you mr uh, uh, mr speaker the honorable senator boni Mr. Speaker, I just want to congratulate uh, Honorable Sotsi, the Senator of Vihiga, for this very important statement. For a long time, agriculture was a main forex exchange honor for this country. And uh, because not too much thought has been put into it, this iconic status has now been lost, and uh, it is being lost to unpredictable products like the inflow of funds from Kenyans living in the diaspora. Mr. Speaker, we need to take it even more aggressively so that over and above reviving tourism as it, it has been, we should cause tourists to come to Kenya for other reasons other than the big five in our wildlife and our sandy beaches at the coast. Mr. Speaker, if you come to the western part of Kenya, the tourist potential is massive, but it is not marketed as an alternative to the big five. Mr. Speaker, in western, starting from Lake Victoria, the Kitmigai, going to the Vihiga the stones, going to the Kakamega forest, going to Elesi stone, the growing stone of Africa. Mr. Speaker, all the way to the rich culture of Isukuti and bullfighting, there are things that can bring in billions of dollars on a weekly basis and the product is not being developed. And as if it is not enough, you can see the hotels have collapsed. It is very sad that we understand even the hotel like the hotel of Homer Bay, the hotel like Golf Hotel, they're all going under simply because of people not being aggressive enough. I therefore support and hope that this house will take it more aggressively than just taking it as a statement from a distinguished senator. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Senator Eddy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I think that uh, these are very important uh, uh, statement from uh, the Senator of, of uh, Viga, my brother, Senator Osotsi. And uh, we do understand very well that uh, the government uh, is trying as much as possible to impose some austerity, austerity measures, but uh, hotels form a big base. Uh, hotels in our counties, and, and my brother here will tell you that uh, they form a, 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 big, a big base of uh, small and medium enterprises that uh, you see many of the government policies trying to uh, look at in the sense that if you go anywhere in this county today, the real estate industry in uh, mostly uh, far-flung counties tend to be around hotels. And therefore, we should not look at hotels as uh, mere functions of uh, the big players. But hotels forms a very big base of uh, small, medium enterprises in this country. And uh, trying to put austerity measures that indirect hotels that we cannot be able to uh, go to these hotels and do meetings, is actually killing the same economy that the government is trying to face. Mr. Speaker, I want to say this, and uh, I hope people like... Uh, my brother, uh, Matthew, who I know is uh, in the deep state, 
I want, I want to say this, Mr. Speaker. Our approach to austerity measures in this country is a wanting one. Because uh, what's happening in this country is very simple. We are in a country where it looks like we have a river that is flowing, and uh, there are people who have uh, Senator basically... Senator what is your point of order? <coughs> okay, proceed. Uh, sorry. sorry about that, Mr. Speaker. So we, we, do, we, do have a, we do have an economy that works like this. It's like a river where we've got resources flowing downstream. And then somebody has dug dams around this river. 